During the hellacious and bloody battles of World War I, a terrifying new enemy was unleashed beneath the waves of the sea, the submarine. Never before had these new weapons of war seen such deadly and widespread usage. The Germans in particular used submarines to lethal effect. The German U-boat, silent, stealthy, appearing from nowhere from under the dark waves to ravage their victims. Yet, although these undersea spectres of death terrorised the enemy, it would prove that there were mysterious forces at work aboard one U-boat that would go on to terrorise its crew instead of the enemy and propel it into a legend of one of the greatest undersea mysteries and cursed vessels of that time. In early 1918, the sea war was not going well for Germany. She needed every U-boat she could muster. The U-boat, UB-65, was at its disposal, but there was a problem with her. There was nothing mechanically wrong with UB-65. She was ready to sail in an instant. The problem was the crew. They were convinced that she was haunted. Built in 1916, a week after construction began, a steel girder fell from an overhead crane and killed two workers below. And just a few weeks later, three more workers died when poisonous fumes from the new engines filled the compartment they were working in. After the submarine was launched on Friday the 26th of January 1917, during a trial run at sea, a sailor was swept overboard and drowned. Then, during its first underwater test, the submarine developed a serious leak which stopped it resurfacing for 12 hours. The whole crew almost died due to running out of air, and when the submarine finally resurfaced, the crew were seen struggling to get through the hatches, gasping for air. The crew were convinced that their submarine was jinxed or cursed. The officers on board tried hard to put a stop to what they saw as defeatist talk, but the following day matters became worse. As torpedoes were being loaded into the submarine for the first time, one of them exploded. Five seamen died, including the U-boat's second-in-command, Lieutenant Richer. Replacements were immediately drafted in, and preparations were continued. On the day they were due to set sail, the U-boat captain was plotting the vessel's route with the chief navigator, when a terrified sailor ran in and began to blabber about having just seen Lieutenant Richer, the second officer who had been killed in the freak torpedo accident. He had seen him walking outside on the bow of the sub, facing the conning tower with his arms folded as he had always used to do. The captain thought the crewman was obviously just seeing things, but nevertheless went to investigate the deck, where he found another crewman cowering in fright near the conning tower. This terrified crewman confirmed the story and explained that the dead second officer had sort of hovered off the ground along the bow and had stopped to look out over the sea before simply vanishing into thin air. Another incident occurred two months later. UB-65 was on the surface in the English Channel during a rough spell of weather when the starboard watch noticed an officer standing on the deck as the waves crashed over the decks. All the U-boat's hatches had been fastened to prevent the sea from flooding the U-boat. Nobody but themselves could have been on the deck so they were surprised at first to find someone standing below. They were even more surprised to see that he was impervious to massive waves crashing into him that should have swept him overboard. But when the figure turned to face them, the watch recognised him immediately. It was Lieutenant Richer who had died months earlier. Once back at the naval base in Germany, UB-65 was undergoing a routine refit and resupply. The Richer incident was reported, and the submarine was closely examined for leaking fumes that might have caused the crew to hallucinate, but nothing was found. The captain did everything he could to discourage talk of ghosts, and told his crew that anyone who reported seeing a ghost would be severely punished. This had the desired effect, but sailors, as most human beings do, talked among themselves, and the eerie tension began to mount. The bad luck, however, would continue. One week later, an officer was swept overboard when a freak wave took him off guard. 
a little later, an engineer broke a leg as he descended one of the step ladders. UB-65 also came under attack from the Royal Navy and survived over an hour of being death charged. However, the shockwaves from one of the explosions threw one of the sailors to the ground with such a force it killed him. This could all just be a case of very bad luck for the submarine's crew. However, the final mission of UB-65 was, and still is, one of the most unexplained mysteries in maritime history. At 6.30pm on Wednesday the 10th of July 1918, the L-2, an American submarine, was cruising in St. George's Channel. Lieutenant P.F. Forster noticed what he first thought was a buoy on the horizon. As he moved closer, he realised that it was a German submarine, UB-65. It was listing heavily in the water and appeared to be badly damaged. Forster, thinking it was a trap, immediately gave the order to sink it. His submarine moved into position, ready to fire off its torpedoes. But just as he was lining up to fire, UB-65 was ripped apart by a massive explosion. There were no survivors and no bodies were recovered. The explosion has never been explained, but was thought to be accidental. However, the biggest mystery of all was that just before the American submarine, the L-2, prepared to fire, Lieutenant Forster reported seeing a German officer on deck near UB-65's bow with his arms folded. He recognised the uniform as being that of a German lieutenant. The description of the man he gave matched that of Lieutenant Richer. Was this just extremely bad luck for the crew of UB-65? Or was the submarine cursed or jinxed from the start? <laughs>